Welcome to Greiner Hard Talks. Once again today, I want to talk about sustainability because I believe creating a sustainable world is the challenge of our time. So how to create a more sustainable future? How to create sustainable businesses? This is the question I want to discuss with my guests today, Barbara Diesel, CFO of Greiner Packaging. Hi, Stefan. Hi, Barbara. Hi. We can both sit here because we both tested negative. That's um, obviously very important in these tough times. Yes. And the next 30 minutes, we want to talk about sustainability. We're going to talk about money. Yeah, you are the CFO. There's no way out. We're obviously <laughs> going to talk about plastics. But before we start, um, I want to do something different. Um, I've brought a couple of sentences that I would like you to finish. That is okay. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason is, um, I know you have been with Griner when I joined. That was four years ago. But I feel like I need to get to know you as a person. Yeah. You're very welcome. Good. First sentence. When I was a child, I wanted to become... A farmer. A farmer? Yes. Well, that didn't work out at all. <laughs> no, not at all. Unless you have cows at home. No, I don't have. But unfortunately, my grandmother didn't manage to find a proper man for me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Next sentence. One person I admire. Coco Chanel, definitely. Why that? Because she was such a strong woman just going her way and doing what she loves. Next sentence. When I'm not in the office, I enjoy... I enjoy being outside with my family. Currently, we are going skiing a lot. During Corona, that's... Yes, yeah, that's I finally cool. managed. Okay. <laughs> Great, that sounds like a lot of fun. Next sentence. In five years, I... To be honest, Stefan, this is a question I, I never answer because I'm a person who lives, who tries to live in the moment uh, and I know how short life can be. So I don't care what is in five years. There's no five year plan. No. <laughs> I know that question from interviews and I always yeah. ask myself like, why is it actually relevant? I mean, five years is a long time. Huh? Next question is the most adventurous thing I have done in my life. That was definitely a, a three weeks journey uh, through the north of India, which I did uh, on my own 10 years ago. Great. <laughs> Next sentence. One talent I wish I had. This is also a difficult question. Uh, I think I have a lot of talents and I'm also missing some. But to be honest, I don't miss them really because I think talents are wisely spread. So everybody has something. Great. Yeah, that's it. I mean, today is very much about more difficult questions, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's jump into the topic of sustainability. Yeah. And um, let's start with something easy, or maybe something that is not so easy, the, the word sustainability, mm. because everyone uses it, mm. yeah, like you read about in the newspaper all the time. There's like plenty of like videos on the internet, documentaries. When you hear sustainability, what, what comes to your mind when you hear the word? When I hear the word, what comes to my mind is uh, sustainable decisions. And this is what I try to accomplish in, in private and professional life. Because what I decide today uh, should also be valid tomorrow. This is what I think about it. And I think also like what I decide today obviously yeah. has an impact yeah. about how tomorrow goes. Sure. Yeah? I sure. think that is like also a very important aspect of sustainability. Now, looking into society, we can see that Things are obviously changing. People are more sustainability aware. Yeah. yeah, like even like my mom, like she talks about sustainability. Mm -hmm. Also, if you look at the um, Friday for Future generation. So how do you perceive that change in society? Because sustainability hasn't been a topic 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what, what has changed here? Like, and and why, has, why has sustainability become such a huge topic? I think that definitely the awareness has changed. Um, people are more confronted uh, with all kinds of changes in our world, like 
climate change. I think that's the most popular uh, thing. And, and also waste, uh, waste in the nature is everywhere, uh, especially um, on TV. Uh, and that's a good word because it's, it's on TV and it's visible now. Uh, it's already there since, since long time. And I think this has changed the visibility and therefore also the minds and the opinions of the people have changed. And I think like plastic is a good example yeah. because you can see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see images and pictures sure. of when things are not properly disposed, for instance. Yes. Yeah. What does it mean for us as a company? Now, we can see that consumers change, society, we are part of society as a company. Now, what does it mean for us as a company? How do you see us affected by a changing society? Mm. I, th I see us affected in a positive way mm -hmm. um, because this whole sustainability discussion and the increased awareness uh, puts us also in a position that we now have the chance to uh, think things differently. We have to. Now we simply have to. We have to throw our old opinions away and we have to learn and create new ways of thinking. But that's not easy. I mean, like, you know, no. <laughs> changing behavior. Yeah. I mean, I know that, you know, um, I, I tend to have a certain behavior and, um, and I'm struggling. So, like, how do we do as a company with that change? Yeah, it has to be a constant. It's a constant work. Yeah. Uh, it's a constant work. Uh, it has to do a lot uh, with leadership. Uh, leaders in the company have to be a role model uh, for that. Um, yeah, it's a constant process. Each minute we have to work in it. And there's obviously no end to it. No, yeah. it will never end. Okay. <laughs> then let's look into the packaging business, yeah? Because there's obviously like a, an urgent need to mm -hmm. change something. Mm -hmm. um, where do you see Ghana packaging in, in five years? Let's come back mm -hmm. to that because we have to talk about the future and just saying like, we don't know is obviously not an yeah. answer. Where are we 2025? What, what, are, what are the three things that have to change? Um, what has to change definitely is speed. We have to gain speed uh, in these new advantages, in these new adventures and in these new tasks. Um, we are working uh, closely together with our suppliers in order to get more sustainable, sustainable materials. We are making progress, but it's too slow. So speed is definitely one thing, uh, what we have to uh, increase. Uh, what we also have to increase is innovation. We have to be more innovative. I think we are already an innovative uh, company, but we have to be even more uh, innovative. Uh, and, and third thing is still more a closer cooperation with our customers. That's already good, but even that can be improved. Yeah. So let's pick up the first example. You're saying like pace, speed is an issue. Like, but what, what can we do? What, what can you do with your colleagues in, in, in the executive management to increase the, the, the speed? What are like, you know, again? No, I think we have to free up. We have to free up the, the management and, and each and every employee. We have to free them up from the old things mm -hmm. because they are so busy with keeping the maintaining business uh, that there is not enough free space to, to work on the new future business. Let's go back to our response is, is a strategy that we have um, called a circular economy strategy. Um, looking into the broader picture of, of plastics, there's obviously a reputation issue, mm -hmm. yeah, because something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. um, now, the question is, do you think we're still going to do plastics in 2030 or do we at one point realize, okay, we're not going to fix the problem, so we're going to drop the material? I'm convinced that we will do still plastics, uh, but maybe not exclusively plastics. Um, we are already now producing plastics and, and cardboard combination, for example, and, and we have to or will most probably increase that. Yeah, we have to think uh, in new ways, but I'm convinced that plastic will stay. Uh, and I'm also convinced that the current discussion we have is, is not uh, fair and not based on facts. Why that? What, what, is, what is not? It's too simple. We said um, plastic, we don't like plastics. Plastics is not good for the environment and we admire glass for whatever reason. 
And these are the questions uh, which, from my point of view, are not um, uh, answered completely so that the customer has the complete truth. But at least for glass, we see a fully functioning circular economy because it's usually recycled. So obviously the material is usually one is step a, Usually ahead. is a good word. It's usually recycled. Yeah, but I think like the recycling <laughs> rates are yeah. a little better than at yeah, least sure, than sure. what we see with plastics. Because with plastics, it's obviously they end up like usually incinerated or even like landfilled in a lot of sure. um, countries, which is obviously not good. Now, while people criticize plastics, what we can also observe is that a lot of governments say we need to tax plastics. Mm -hmm. Now, I would be interesting. Are you nervous about that as no, a CFO when, not at when, all. when the government say like, okay, now this needs a high tax? Not at all. I'm not afraid of taxes. Uh, we simply have to manage it. And we will also manage this. If the taxes are there, they are already there. Uh, so no, I'm not afraid. Are you afraid about that, you know, the European Commission, for instance, started banning and looking into products where they feel like, okay, we don't want this um, product made out of plastics. That's also of not concern. I'm also not afraid of this because if they come to the conclusion that something should be banned uh, that's based on something uh, and then it has a good reason uh, and then we have to, to rethink maybe our business, um, parts of it. Um, but no, I'm also not afraid of this. Then let's go back a little to the broader sense or like the broader importance of sustainability. Um, as a company, one of the targets is obviously to grow. Yeah? yeah, more revenues, more yeah. profits. Now, do you think that sustainability and growth, does that go together? Or is it in the end like a contradiction? You can't grow without being more sustainable. Uh, no, that definitely goes together. Um, I'm convinced that we can grow if we do our jobs well. Um, so if we do all that, what I just said before, if we think in new ways, we, if we rethink our processes, I think we can be even more successful uh, than we are now. But like, again, changing and like reflecting on how we, think, how we do things mm -hmm. obviously needs a certain culture. Yeah. I would argue it needs a, a changed culture. Sure. Where do you see us? Because we have been like successful with a linear model for like very long, you mm -hmm. know? And, and I still, still see colleagues questioning, like, why do we need to become circular? What is it all about? Where do you see us? I mean, where do you see room for improvement as well? There is definitely a long way to go to have this culture um, and also to, to have a culture where, where mistakes are allowed, for example. Um, we started um, especially to work on that, to change the culture, because we see with our current culture, we cannot... Uh, um, uh, uh, reach what we want um, and it's very hard work as I said um, I think we at least realize that we have to change and that's the first important step that's obviously very <laughs> true now we said we want to talk about money because yeah. there it might be cases when it comes to sustainability um, where a more sustainable solution can be more costly. Yeah? Let's take the example of uh, materials. Yeah? We all know virgin material in some cases is, is, is um, cheaper yes. than, than using recycled content. How do we deal with that? Because it obviously has an impact on our profits. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We already have very uh, practical examples from our day-to-day -day business as we are offered uh, recycled material at higher prices. And we take them because currently our main focus is to have it, that we are able to offer it um, to the customer. So, uh, yes, I'm with you short term in that moment. Uh, it harms our profit, but it's definitely necessary for our long term success. And what do our customers say about this? Do they, are they willing or do they like, you know, keep arguing with What they always us? say in the first moments <laughs> is, no, it's your business. You have to pay for it. But in the end, uh, we have very good relationships with our customers where we share this common responsibility and also pay for it yeah. together. But if you look at our suppliers and customers, yeah. do you see that as a trend or are they now serious about like mm -hmm. changing? And they are definitely serious about it. It's yeah, serious. How, how do you see that? I mean, what, um, like, what confirms because that? Because like? it's already there for a long time. Uh, and uh, we see increasing activities 
So like, for example, three years ago, we had yeah, once, once in a year an offer for recycled material. And now that comes more and more often. And the, the requests from the customers are there each day. Okay, so it's not going to go away. No, uh, definitely the circular not. circular economy is yeah. not going to be a trend, no. um, whether we like it or not. 100% right. <laughs> okay, great. Good. I want to touch on a different topic uh, because, again, sustainability is, is, is very broad. Um, and I want to talk about diversity because that's something where I feel we as an organization obviously struggle. Yeah? Yes. If you just look at the, the, the number of female leadership um, in all divisions, there is an issue. Now, tell me, like in general, before we come to Greiner and what mm -hmm. we can do, why do companies, from your perspective, struggle to, um, to get to 50-50 in the end? I think um, that the awareness was not there for a very, very long time. Um, I can see that it has increased a lot, especially in the last two years, I feel it. Um, but simply the awareness and the, the seriosity of this topic was not there. Um, and also the companies were not forced to change. So the way how they worked simply worked out. Yeah. There was no need to change. Mm. But now you're saying that, that um, a younger generation demands it. Or, or why, did, why is it now more important? Yeah, I think it's not, not only the younger generation. I think it's also that uh, the advantages of mixed teams um, uh, also in the top management become more and more visible. Mm. Uh, so that's one thing. And the other thing is that the uh, discussions um, about uh, 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 Qu quotes uh, in as so a female quotes in in the in the top management are um, they are simply there now that we have to fulfill them now we have set ourselves a target at Greiner of like 35 percent female yeah. um, leadership yeah um, now looking at the numbers we are not there yet no <laughs> um, what does it take to get to 35 percent what is like, again, like stuff that you discuss with your mm, colleagues yeah. around that topic? It's again a change. <laughs> again, also there we, we, we need to change. Uh, um, what we discuss or what, what I discussed in our division uh, still two years ago is that uh, in a management position, you have to work full time. Why? Or what I read yesterday in an email, she's only working part time. Why is part time only? Yeah, things like that. So it's about working models. It's yes. about work-life balance. It's about also... Yeah, and it's also about what I also uh, see is that also I as a leader, uh, when I'm recruiting uh, new people, you tend to it that you recruit people who are similar to yourself. Where do you think, ah, I can get along well with, yes, the, the know-how is, is very good, I can get along well uh, with, and they are, my favorites, a lot of times are similar to me. This I realized. And I think that also in the other management positions where men take the decisions, they are also recruiting people similar to them. Yeah, I think that, that that is well known that that effect, it's a called me too effect. Yeah, yeah you hire someone yeah. that uh, kind of like um, got the same back, um, similar background. Yeah. You know? Now, I said we have a target of like 35 percent. Mm -hmm. Now, when talking to colleagues, they would say like, why only 35? Why don't we go for 50 50? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should be like equally. Um, um, well, represented when it comes to boards and teams and whatever there is. What do we tell them? Why just 35 and not 50? I think the 35 is just a step. I think we want it to, to uh, make a step visible and it can only be a, a target in between. Yeah. That's not, from my point of view, it's not finished at 35%. It's going to be finished when it's 50 50, yeah. you were saying. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense because the target that we have is um, 35 by 2025. Yeah. So, so very um, soon. 
very soon. <laughs> yeah, uh, we are not there yet again. <laughs> but um, obviously another topic that we're not going to fix overnight and another topic that will be with us um, for, for a longer yes. um, uh, period. So now looking into the future, looking into 2025 again, yeah, because becoming more sustainable is obviously also like shaping a picture of, of where we want to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you look at 2025, what are what are the topics that we need to address as a company mm -hmm. to become more sustainable? Mm -hmm. As I said before, I think the, the mindset, mindset change and the cultural change, um, uh, we, we realize that we have to work on that. So, so culture develops and it develops better if you work on it. So that's definitely uh, one thing. Um, the other thing is the diversity topic. And I don't want to... Uh, um, set the target there to only when it comes to women, but on a cultural uh, diversity um, also. Uh, and the circular economy topic, uh, yeah, as, as we've said before, have, has to be part of our DNA. Now, there is a lot of things that we can do, for instance, like to reduce emissions. Um, and one example is, for example, we can look into a different car policy. Mm. Uh, we can look into how we do travels, business travels. You know, now we've learned during Corona that actually, you know, we can manage and we can like do business without traveling that much. Mm. How do you how do you look at that? Are we going to go back to like everyone traveling? also putting a burden on, mm. on climate change? Now, first of all, I think that just the two examples you mentioned are, are not driving our emissions. Yes, they do. But we as a company have definitely uh, um, other focus areas like our productions uh, and, and things like that, where, where the majority of our emissions uh, come from. Uh, and to your question, I don't think that we go back completely uh, to how we worked together before, uh, like traveling like hell. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I think and I hope it will be a mixture because the current work mode is also not healthy. Sitting in teams and Zoom meetings the whole day and talking to the computer. So you it's miss, not the real world. I miss it a lot. You miss that <laughs> yes. a lot, having your colleagues around that yeah. just open the door, bump into your yes. office. Yes, and to, to go abroad and to be in our entities yeah. where the productions are. This I miss really a lot. Great. Now, um, time is flying. Yeah. We are almost at the <laughs> end. I brought a couple of buzzwords and I'd like to ask you to just yeah, to respond with whatever comes to your okay. mind. Okay, I'm excited. Yeah, <laughs> good. First buzzword is mountains. Silence. Recycling. Very modern currently. Next buzzword is transformation. Constantly ongoing. Next buzzword is respect. Nature. My next buzzword is nature. So that doesn't work anymore no. here. <laughs> <laughs> I could ask respect and then we come back to nature. Um, next buzzword is Paris. A, a city I've visited and didn't connect. With the city? No. Okay. <laughs> What city do you like? Any other? What's Rome. your favorite city? I love Rome. Rome? Yes. Yeah, but isn't that very hot and like and then hectic? But and it's summer? very Italian and I love Italians. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. Then, last question. If you had one message to the world, yeah, and let's make it the Grino world, mm. like what would that message be? Be aware. About Everything. About everything, what you do and try to be it in every single moment. Could be no better way to end <laughs> this interview. Barbara, thanks for being with me here today. Thank you I for inviting me. I very much enjoyed that. Same here. Thank you. I hope you've also enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Stay happy and more importantly, stay healthy.